The stakes are high for the snowboarders in Vancouver as they try to master new tricks to unseat the star of Torino, American Sean White. But to get max air off the half pipe without losing their balance, they might want to check out this experiment that Paul Doherty, a physicist funded by the National Science Foundation, has cooked up using a skateboard and a glass of water. Ever since snowboarding made its Olympics debut 12 years ago, it's taken off worldwide. So tell me in Italian, you would say, I'm going snowboarding. Vado a fare snowboard. The lingo that American snowboarders use might still sound like a foreign language to some. I dropped into a crippler to back three, and after that I was like, woo woo. <laughs> but the science that these boarders use to do tricks on the half pipe couldn't be simpler. The laws of gravity, building speed, and especially balance. At the Exploratorium Museum in San Francisco, senior staff scientist Paul Doherty knows a thing or two about the physics of snowboarding. What really interests me about the half pipe is it's an example of dynamic balance. The snowboarder has to realize that when they're in motion in this half pipe, the balance that they keep is quite different than if they were standing still on a steep slope. He even created a model to illustrate how snowboarders keep their balance in the half pipe. Stay upright without taking a spill. If I'm building up my motion in the half pipe back and forth, I can go all the way up to the rim and the water stays level in the glass. A snowboarder has to remember that when they're in the half pipe. They have to feel not only gravity straight down, but the forces of the snow on them, which change angle as they move. As gravity pulls snowboarders down the half pipe, they gain speed. But at the very same time, they're being pushed against the sides of the half pipe by contact forces from the surface of the snow. That snowboarder feels like they're being crushed against the surface. Even 2006 gold medalist Sean White has felt the power that friction can exert on his board. There's actually like G-force when you're going up and it's sucking you against the wall. Snowboarders push back against these G-forces and build more speed by pumping their legs up and down. Every time you see somebody in the half pipe that's going fast and big, they're pumping. She lands so high and is able to pump as hard as she can across the flat bottom. By standing up against those extra forces in the curve, snowboarders add to their kinetic energy, the energy of motion, and that gives them the speed they need to get air. So the whole idea is to go as fast as possible, because the faster you go, the higher you go, and the higher you go, the more points you get, and the better tricks you can do. One more factor in achieving maximum speed is the height of the half pipe. The taller the pipe, the more gravitational energy a snowboarder stores at the top. Potential energy. That's what gives matter the potential to move. When a snowboarder launches down the ramp, that potential energy gets converted into kinetic energy. When they take off the ground, they're generating a lot of velocity, so they have kinetic energy. As they go up in the air, gravity's slowing them down, so they're actually losing kinetic energy and it's being converted to potential energy. When they're at the top of their jump and they're at their highest, they have the most potential energy. That potential energy will come in handy in Vancouver, where the new in-ground super pipe created for the 2010 Olympics will be the biggest one ever, rising 22 feet high. At that height, we'll see some awesome tricks, and the boarders will have more time to hang out in the air.